Somebody type in Franz in the France. chat for me, right? I hope you love that song, man. I was singing was in the background. So they, they just decided to throw that together. Well, yeah. listen, we are in a series on Friends, yeah. and we wanted to do, uh, we want to have fun. Yes. I mean, there's too We're much craziness. There's too much insanity happening, and we just needed to have some fun. Can somebody type in the word fun for me? <laughs> Can somebody? Confetti. Yeah, throw in, some, throw in some confetti, type in the word, thank God for some fun. Listen, in fact, do me a favor, let us know where you're watching yeah. from and who's watching with you. Make sure you're engaging in the chat, let us know that you're here. We're a talk back kind of church and, and we're excited, but here's what we're doing. This series is called Friends. Yeah. Everybody type friends. We and, just did that. Oh, we'll do it again. Okay, is let's that okay? Do it a lot. Let's do it three times. Type friends three times Another just time. because. Go for it. She doesn't want me to say type first. We've got a studio audience with us as well who will be cheering. Studio audience, would you cheer for me? Hey, all right. Pretty excited. But what we're doing is we're taking a biblical approach to every relationship in our life, marriage, dating, friendship, coworkers, neighbors, everything in between. And we're taking a biblical approach. Like, what does the Bible have to say about our relationships? But we're having some fun. And we're doing so through the lens of the television show Friends. We wanted to have as much possible fun as we possibly could. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive in really quick. Yep. And we're going to unpack. This is going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're yes. going to have a blast. But if you missed last week, you got to go check it out. Because got we talked to. all about how Slip to handle camera. Yes. We talked about a lot of fun that things. That happened as well. We, you need to see it we, to believe it. But we talked all about handling conflict and, and everything like that. But today's a little different. It is different. And here's what we're going to do. She thought I was missing something on my notes, so she jumped in to correct oh me. That was like conflict resolution 101 happening real time. Because Guys, I, 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 I bowed down to you. Oh, that was I very amazing. Okay. But listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a few moments, and we're going to unpack each of the characters of Friends. So all of them, Phoebe, Ross, Chandler, Monica, Joey, and maybe Rachel. even uh, Rachel, but maybe the guy with the broom that lives downstairs. We're going to unpack their characters and their personality traits, their weaknesses, and their strengths. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to identify with which friend's character you, you identify with the most, okay? So we're going to kind of unpack this. And for those of you that don't watch Friends, those of you who have no clue what we're talking about, no worries. And no, we're not pulling from the, we're, we're not calling Friends the Bible. We're pulling from the Bible. But we're going to take a look at characters from the show. And I want you to identify which one really describes you the best. And then what we're going to do is take a look at how to interact with each other in the midst of the delicate differences. Right. So let's dive into this thing. Right. We all, we all need to know how to interact with one another. Because yeah. Because relationships can be extremely challenging Absolutely. right now, can't they? Okay, so let's dive in. And the first character we're going to explore, her name is Phoebe. Absolutely. Phoebe. Everybody sing Smelly Cat for a moment. <laughs> or type it in the chat there. Phoebe. Phoebe is easygoing. She's creative. She's supportive. Um, Phoebe is accepting of everyone. Yeah. But the problem is Phoebe avoids conflict at all costs. She has a trouble confronting issues. And we see this in one of the favorite scenes from Friends where instead of telling <laughs> Monica that she wants to move out of Monica's apartment because Monica is too difficult to live with, <laughs> she just slowly moves her belongings out and hopes that Monica will figure it out on her own. I think that Phoebe... <laughs> How many of you have thought about doing that during quarantine? Just oh, raise I'm your hand sure. in the chat. Like, sure. if I secretly leave, will anyone know that I'm missing? <laughs> I'm going to go live on the beach. Actually, you can't anymore. You can't. Or maybe you can. We don't know. Moving on. Moving, moving on. Moving on. Hey, Phoebe has a lot of unresolved anger. Yeah. Um, but she's afraid to let it out. Maybe if you relate with that right now, you can throw up a fire emoji in the chats. But... But she often shifts to a passive aggressive yeah. approach to her relationships, like the time where she was mad at Ross, but she refused to tell him why. <laughs> I think um, my wife has done that to me like four I or five times. Have. But the gift about Phoebe is she's a natural mediator and yeah. she, she often recognizes the value in, in all different kinds of people and all different kinds of situations. So if you identify with Phoebe, type I'm Phoebe. Let's talk next about Chandler Bing. <laughs> Chandler Bing. Listen, Chandler Bing is like the loyal guy who's always consistent. But he always has this strong need to prove yeah. himself, constantly seeking stability in his life, but always trying to feel like he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And he's very loyal, but the loyalty can actually become a downfall. See, he yeah. wants security. And he wants security so much that he kind of falls into this trap of being overly yeah. cautious. I don't know if anybody can relate. Overly 
cautious. So safety, loyalty, security, yeah. but a little bit over the top cautious. In fact, he's so concerned about security, he stays with this stable, steady job, and no one ever knows what Chandler Bing actually so even does. And here's the bigger challenge. Chandler views the world through the lens of fear. So he's a difficulty tr trusting people, let alone his inner voice. Like he wrestles with the committee on the inside. Yeah. Like, can I trust even myself? And, and so as a result, he looks to others to give him reassurance. Yeah. Like the time when he was convinced that Monica would not be with him, was going to leave because they had one <laughs> argument. And so maybe you can relate with Chandler Bing. If you can, type it yeah. in the chat. The next character we're going to look at is Monica. I mean, look at that hair. I mean. Look at that hair. How I think you, many of you love Monica? You used to have hair just like this. <laughs> I probably did. In it's fact, I think when I met you, you, were, you had hair like this, and you were wearing overalls with a red, red yeah. turtleneck sweatshirt from Old Navy. Accurate, Anybody even remember Old Navy? Is I that still a store? It still exists. Monica. Let's go on. <laughs> Does it still exist? Nothing exists anymore. It's COVID. That's Everything true. is shut That's down. That's true. Except Monica. for Home Depot. Moving on. Back to Monica. Monica is your classic perfectionist, yeah. okay? She's meticulously organized. She's on top of every kind of task. Any perfectionist yeah. out there She's, right now? Yeah, if you have a perfectionist You're not typing because you are afraid that it may not be perfect or you might misspell it or autocorrect. Just do the like, emoji where you raise your hand, yeah. right? If you have a strong sense of justice, yeah. um, Monica was one to always stand up for her friends. But the problem is Monica is extremely aware yeah. of the flaws yep. in others. Like the time where she's being grilled by her parents and she does not hesitate at all to throw Ross underneath the bus. You know, she compulsively chases after perfection, which is probably linked to the strange relationship between her and her mom throughout the series. Dang, we're getting philosophically deep with friends right now. It's pretty <laughs> intense, isn't it? It is. Monica sees the world as a place that needs to be fixed, and she needs to be the one to fix it. And she gets angry with others who don't see the world from the same perspective. But on the flip side, Monica is like the rock yeah. that her other friends rely on. Her apartment is the hub where everyone yeah. hangs out, and it's the hub where the whole series takes place. In fact, the very last scene in Friends takes place in Monica's apartment when everyone is leaving the key that they had to her apartment on the counter because her place was the place where everyone liked to gather. So she's a perfectionist, but she's also strength. Yeah. Let's talk about Ross. And every Ross. time I think about Ross, I think about the giraffe from Madagascar as well. <laughs> or but the let's... line, pivot. Yeah, everybody type in pivot. If you're a fan of Ross, type in pivot. Here's what we know about Ross. He always needs to be right. Do I have some people watching today who are pretty convinced you're always right? Type it in. Actually, you don't even have to type it in. Just type, type the smile emoji because you know. And if you know, you know. But here's the thing about Ross. He also often comes across a little bit childish. So chi Childish? Childish. Ch ch I can't speak. Childish. <laughs> he's intelligent and he's curious, but he's a classic overthinker uh, and has some jealous tendencies as well. Uh, he's these angry outbursts yeah. and tantrums, yeah. which often become hilarious. But also his need to be correct is, is kind of funny. And so uh, here's the thing that we love about Ross. His scientific voice of reason kind of uh, helps keep everybody yeah. stable yeah. until his insecurities kick in. So knowledge gives him this sense of control, warding off the feelings of insecurity. I'm telling you, we're going like we're going deep, deep with, with friends, friends characters today. today. He, he, his knowledge is a sense of control, mm. hoping to ward off the feelings of insecurity, insecurity and inadequacy. So he's a loving demeanor and he's endearing, but he's also got this need to please yeah. others. And so that leads to compromise. So maybe you can relate or identify it with Ross. And you can't talk about Ross without talking about Rachel. Also look at that hair. Come on. That's that majestic. Famous hair. Some of you guys have hair like this right now because you haven't been in to see your barber. I, I won't name names. If it's your husband, type in your husband's name right now. Listen, when we talk about Rachel, Rachel's character changes and develops throughout the seasons yeah. of the show. Um, starting as a runaway bride, depending on her dad to provide for her. And then she goes to being a financially successful girl boss in the fashion industry. And the thing about Rachel is she is competitive, she's ambitious, she rises to yeah. the challenges in her life. Rachel is very career driven yeah. once she decided what she wanted to pursue. She can be dramatic and moody and self-absorbed. And the, the problem is Rachel has a hard time recognizing her feelings. Yeah. 
And when she does know how she feels, she tends to try to cover it up so that she looks like she has everything together. And that may be why she has a hard time recognizing her feelings for Ross. And again, what we're doing is just looking at, taking a look at everybody's character from friends to see who you might identify with. Because, listen, stay tuned to the end. At the very end of this, we're going to come back and bring some practicals. Yeah. So if you identify with the tendencies of Phoebe or Ross or Joey or Rachel, how do you actually navigate through life in relationships right now? We have one more character, too. I can't forget Joey. We will not forget Joey. We got Joey over here. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? (laughs) Type in how you doing just for a moment. Hey, if you're married and you're a dude and you're sitting next to your wife, just look over at her with that smoldery look and say, how you doing right now? (laughs) Yeah, awesome. Joey is extroverted and flexible. He's optimistic and, and full of adventure. He's the fun friend, right? Yeah. And he If has, you're the fun friend, <laughs> type in I'm the fun friend right now. Right now. He's got all sorts of qualities that he uses for odd jobs and networking and he's always seeking new fun and adventure because he's never quite content with what he has. Yeah. He's usually in good spirits and, and happy and he tends to be the comedic relief of the show. Um, Joey, however, has a difficult time with commitment. He has a hard time committing to work and to romantic relationships. That's the nature of who Joey is. That sums up our characters. We're not going to unpack the Enneagram number of Smelly Cat or any other characters now, but here's what I want to do. I want to just take a moment and talk through what that looks like because here's the thing. All of us are different. Yeah. And it's easy to identify, as you're listening to, which type of person that maybe fits you the best. But it's also to identify what's frustrating about people in your world. What's kind of aggravating, especially after seven or eight or nine or 32 weeks of COVID that we're locked up in our homes. And and, and the things that used to be kind of insignificant have become more of a real frustration for us. So it's easy to identify these differences. But listen, I want to just tell you this, and I want to encourage you to write this down. Our differences are not dysfunctions. They are by design. Let me say that one more time. Our differences are not dysfunctions. They're literally by design. God created us this way. In fact, we read about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, We we hear Paul talking about God's heartbeat and intent for the body of Christ. It says this in chapter 12, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not the hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. Look at verse 18. It says this, But as it is... God arranged members in the body, each one of them he chose. Listen, God made us, we're all different, and we need each other. We do. Let me say that again. God made us, we're all different, and we need each other. Can I just encourage you for a moment? You can be friends with people that are different than you. Yeah. The person who drives you the most crazy right now, yeah. you can be friends with them. In fact, more often than not, our differences complement each other. Yeah. God made us, we're all different, and we need each other. So here's what we're going to do. Give you some practicals on how to deal with the delicate differences. Yeah. Type that in, delicate differences. Let's talk like about that. three specific things. Delicate differences. Delicate differences. Why do you do the Italian hand? I don't That's know. why I started that last week. <laughs> You're like, delicate differences. <laughs> love Italy, so maybe that's oh, why. I that's don't know. right. Go, okay. Keep on going. We have like 11 minutes. we got to rock. Okay, so one of the ways you can deal with the delicate differences in relationships, and I think this is crucial, you've got to learn to celebrate yeah. the strengths in the people yeah. that are in your world. Great. So celebrate their strengths. When you celebrate their strengths, it, it cultivates compassion that's good. for their weaknesses. Say that again. When you celebrate their strengths, it cultivates compassion for their weaknesses. Listen, any of us can find fault with other people. Any of us can get annoyed with or frustrated by our spouse or our friends. It is easy to pick out their flaws and frustrations. It's easy to pick out your flaws. And that is so, oh, that's not what you meant. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Let's move along. I thought you were saying, okay, go ahead, moving on. 
Oh my. You know, we, we all do this, right? Like Pastor Kerry, we focus on what the other person needs to right. change or how they need it's to It's easy, get isn't it? It's easy to see the imperfections in other people. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, it doesn't take any work. If you can see the imperfections in people in your world, that doesn't mean you're brilliant. It just means you're human. <laughs> right, you're normal. And, and here's the deal. Most of us, when we get frustrated or hurt in a relationship, we tend to rehearse over and yeah. over again what frustrates us about the other person. That's true. Yeah. Their annoying tendencies, the things that just make us mad. We tend to rehearse that over and over. But let me tell you what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Ready for this? It says, refuse to be a critic, wow. full of bias towards others, and judgment will not be passed on you. For you'll be judged by the same standard that you use to judge others. Wow. Ouch. The measurement that you use on them will be used on you. Why would you focus on the flaw in someone else's life and yet fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own? Wow. Ouch. How could you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong when you're guilty of even more? You're being hypocritical and a hypocrite. <laughs> I mean, if it has to repeat itself, it is serious. You're being hypocritical and a hypocrite. First, acknowledge your own blind spots and deal with them. That's good. And then you'll be capable of dealing with the blind spots of your friends. That's great. Listen, the whole point of this scripture in Matthew 7 is that any of us can identify yeah. flaws. It's easy to do that. But it takes intentionality to look for their strengths. That's great. Every personality that we're going to talk about has strengths and weaknesses. We naturally see the weaknesses, but we have to be intentional to discover the strengths. And if you've been at all frustrated with someone in your life, I guarantee you, if you will start to focus in on what their strengths Man, are, that's good. it will shift the atmosphere of your heart. You know why? Because feelings follow focus. That's great. So when you begin to focus on the strengths of your spouse or the strengths of your friend, you will see a shift in the atmosphere. Yeah. You know, I have a good friend who was really struggling in her marriage and, and really just frustrated all the time with her husband. And, and then all of a sudden I saw her about a year after that time and, and she was just doing really great. Yeah. And I said, what changes did you make? And she said, I decided that every single night before I went to bed, I was going to write in a journal three things I was thankful for about my husband. And so she did that, and it began to shift the atmosphere of her heart. It changed things. It's good. But I want to challenge you not to just journal in your own notebook or think it in your own head. I want to challenge you to celebrate the strengths of the people in your world by saying it out loud. You know, critique is like concrete. Yeah. Once it's said, it's set. Wow. Yeah, wow. Critique is like concrete. Once it's said, it's set. But affirmation is like gasoline. In the right hands, you can ignite an unquenchable wow. fire. Listen, when you begin to celebrate and recognize the strengths hmm. of the people that are in your world and you bring that verbal affirmation to them, man, it changes the atmosphere yeah. of your relationships. Absolutely everything. Absolutely. No, I was just thinking, nobody grows internally and personally because of being overly criticized. Oh, no yeah. one does. I, I don't. I don't I respond don't that way. I, I'm good at being critical, mm -hmm. especially in high pressure situations. Can anybody relate? Maybe if that's you, like as the pressure mounts, it, it becomes easier to become more yeah. critical. I think sometimes because we feel out of control. And so 100%. then we start to see the imperfections and the flaws everywhere else. And so when we point out the imperfections everywhere else, it takes the pressure yeah. off of me with the scenario that I'm out yeah. of control with. Yeah. Does that make sense? And yeah. so here's my encouragement to you is, man, just celebrate their strengths. Yeah. I think that's such a great point. I think this week you could think about the people that are in your life, whether yeah. it's a spouse or a friend, and when you have a tendency to pick out the weaknesses or you have a tendency to be critical, take a moment yeah. this week and identify the strength and in their personality and celebrate them. In fact, we'll, we'll bring some ideas yeah. at the end of the service today or the message today. But yeah. the point number two is this, acknowledge your weakness. So first celebrate their strength right. and then you have to acknowledge your weaknesses. And it's like, why can't I celebrate my strength? You too? can after you acknowledge all of your weaknesses. That's true. And listen, if you don't think you have weakness, 
That is your first weakness. So if you've got some weakness, if I can get some, can we get some honest and transparent people? If you've got some weakness in your life, can you just type in there, I do, or the hand raise emoji or something? Just, hey, let me know, because I know I do. I and, do too. And, and if we can actually acknowledge our own individual weakness, then it, it'll begin to shift our perspective. Here's the challenge. Our society looks at weakness as disqualification. So our society says, if you're weak, you aren't actually good enough wow. or capable enough to accomplish blank. And wow. so then what happens is we look at our weaknesses as disqualification. Yes. Or worse, we look at our weakness in comparison to someone else's strength. That's a recipe for disaster. To look at your own personal weakness and compare that to someone else's strength will set you up That's for good. disaster. Weakness literally is just this, the state or condition of lacking strength. Wow. Not being disqualified from being strong. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't get strong. It just means the state or condition of lacking strength. Yeah. strength weakness is not the inability to gain strength. Oh. It's just lacking strength. Strength. Listen yeah. to this. Weakness does not equal a flawed design. Wow. It illuminates my need for improvement. Let me say that again. I think it's on there. Maybe type that down, write that in notes. It, weakness does not equal flawed design. It just simply illuminates my need right. for improvement. Paul said that my weakness magnifies the glory of yeah. God. So Paul looked at his wow. weakness as something that pointed to the goodness yeah. of God. In other words, if God is working, and he is, through you, he's working in spite of your weakness, which yeah. means that he's a good and faithful God. It magnifies who yeah. he is. My wife scrolled past where I was. No, I, I just couldn't read that last line. And so now I got her. It, Paul said, in my weakness, he is made strong. So if you don't take inventory for your weakness, you'll never get stronger. Yeah. In other words, you actually have to know the areas where you are weak. Yeah. Listen, unspoken expectation, everyone else needs to change. Here, let me say that again. We will have unspoken expectations that everyone else in our world needs to change yes. and simply deal with my weakness unless we take inventory. That's Let good. me say that again. If you're not taking personal inventory for the weakness in your life, yep. there is an unspoken expectation in every relationship that you are in yep. that everyone else needs to just simply deal with who I am. And, and we have to be aware. Listen, I, I tend to be intense as an individual. Not I know you. that is so surprising. <laughs> so surprising. I, I tend to be a little intense, but the weakness isn't my intensity. In fact, my intensity can be a great source it of strength. It can be a strength. It can. Unless I'm unaware. <laughs> Shut up, studio audience. Unless I am unaware of how my intensity is yeah. impacting the people yeah. around me. And I had kind of a shocking moment in the staff meeting one time where I had like three of our staff members say, you're being really intense. And I was thinking, I'm like a stuffed unicorn over here, <laughs> like eating some nothing bunt cake. Everything is good. <laughs> And like people were crying in the corner and rocking and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. But I didn't realize how intense I was. Yeah. So I had to start asking when, when things would get heightened or the pressure was on. I'd say, hey, on a scale of 1 to 10, how intense am I being? And I'm thinking like a 1.7. <laughs> and like that person would say a uh, 5 and that person would say a 6. And then other people were running out the door screaming, I love it. And all that to say, I was unaware of yeah. my weakness. And so I, there was an unspoken expectation that our staff just had to deal with it. Wow. And that's not fair in any relationship. Right. Yeah. Right. That's not fair in any relationship. Good. So you need, you need to take inventory for your weakness. Psalm 139 says this. This is, this is the psalmist. Is so, this is so great. This is, this is, this is, this is. I don't know. So this is, this is, this is. I can't, I, I like can't get my mind wrapped around what I'm trying to say right now. You got this. This is, this, this, this You got this, babe. Thank you. Come on. Compliment hey, my strength. Let's do this. Psalm 139, 23. The psalmist said this Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious wow. thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. The psalmist is saying, Man, sometimes I don't see my weakness and I need you to help right. me see it. And I just think that might need to be our prayer this week. God, would you search me? I love that part, know my anxious thoughts. Yeah. Anybody feel a little bit anxious in these days? Yeah. 
you know my anxious thoughts and then help me to live how you've called me to live. Right. So what, what are some of the areas of weakness? Maybe if you feel like you always have to be right, that, that could be a weakness. Maybe uh, if you're a perfectionist, that can be a weakness. Hey, if you're invulnerable, like you, you, you don't know how to be vulnerable wow. with people, that is a weakness. Yeah. If you are competitive, I'm not talking about on the court or in a game, but I'm talking about with people, people. that can be a weakness. Our camera lady right now is looking at somebody in the studio audience and judging her hardcore. <laughs> Let's move on. Hey, here's Celebrate another one. Celebrate her strengths. Celebrate her strengths. What is this? <laughs> Celebrate her strengths. <laughs> if you're unteachable, that is a weakness. So let, me, let me tell you, point number three is our keyboard uh, player, my favorite nephew on the planet, uh, is on his way back up today. Uh, point number three is we rock and roll. We, we're out of time. Okay. Initiate transformation. So celebrate their strengths. Uh, I, I got to focus in and work on my weakness, but then I've got to initiate yeah. transformation. You're going to hear us talk about that word a lot right now, transformation. Yep. Uh, we talked about it last week. We're going to speak about it a lot because we've got to actually begin a transformation. God loved us just as we are enough to send his son Jesus to die for us as yeah. we are, but yeah. he loves us far too much to let us stay this way. We've got to begin a transformation process. And I'm saying transformation on purpose because change has this connotation that I've got to stop being weak today and start being strong tomorrow. It doesn't work, like it that. Doesn't work that way. In fact, you set yourself up for disaster. Yeah. You can't just go, okay, I'm done being weak. Yeah, tomorrow I'm strong. It never no. works that way. It takes intentional evolution that I, I realize that tomorrow I might, I'm going to wake up and still have some of these yeah. same weaknesses, but I'm going to work on it a little bit. And in the process, I, I don't, it, the weakness doesn't dissipate, right. but I get just a little bit right. stronger. And I think that is the key. So what we want to do is take a moment, the last few moments of our sermon today, and dive back into the characters. And here's the practicals. Don't tune out yet. We're going to look at each of these characters and talk about how to work on some personal transformation, and then how to celebrate these people in your life. That's right. So listen, if you identify with the character Phoebe, okay, the easygoing, passive peacemaker, if you identify with Phoebe, a, go a goal for personal transformation might be this. Listen, there's no peace without conflict. I'm going to say that again. Yeah, it's there's good. There's no real peace without conflict. And we need your input. So graciously give it. Go back and listen to last week's sermon and, and work on some of the ideas on how to have healthy conflict in relationships. Create some space for honesty in your relationships because we need your voice. And if you have a Phoebe in your world, yeah. a friend or a spouse, listen, here's something you can do to celebrate their strengths. Thank them for being a safe place. Thank them for genuinely caring about you and let them know that you are here for them. That's great. Yeah. And listen, the Chandlers, let's talk about the Chandlers for a moment. The loyal, consistent, but fear-driven decision maker. So if, you, if you're if you the tra Chandler in, in this world today, personal transformation is this. Broaden your circle of trust. Remember, trust is a gift and a muscle. So work it out by giving it. You've got to actually give trust. But listen, I'm not just talking about trusting more people but I'm talking about trusting people with more of yourself. Wow, that's good. I, I, that's the key, trusting people with more of yourself. And for the Chandlers in your world, how do we celebrate them? We thank them for their loyalty and for their attention. You keep moving my notes. And for their attention to detail, which help you make wise decisions, yeah. inform decisions, and let them know that you trust them. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, if you identify with the character of Monica, all yeah. right? Detail-oriented, justice-driven, the critical perfectionist. Listen, for you this week, your goal for personal transformation is to remember your plan is not perfect. I know you think it is, <laughs> but your plan Somebody is not Somebody just got perfect, super cringy right there. <laughs> and neither are you. Yeah. And that's okay. Perfectionism is never the goal. So take time this week to reflect on the goodness of God. Yeah. Take time this week to listen to the insight that others have in your life and don't forget your value. Don't forget that you are doing good. And listen, if you have a Monica in your world, a spouse or a friend, here's something you can do to celebrate their strengths. Thank them yeah. for being thorough, 
Thank them for always following through. Thank them for their commitment to excellence. And listen, let them know that they have done a good job. Yeah, I think that it's needed. I think everybody in your world needs to know that they're doing a good job. And listen, if you're the Ross, the intelligent analyzer and maybe even over-analyzer, some of you are really good at analyzing your over-analyzation and it becomes paralyzing. So if that's you, then for some personal transformation, listen, even with all the facts, brace yourself, even with all the facts, you do not corner the market on truth. Even with all the facts... You don't corner yeah. the market on truth. Listen, your process needs people and outside perspective. Yeah, Let me good. say that to you again for the Rosses watching today. You don't corner the market on truth. Your process needs people and outside perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You need it. We, we all do. And listen, if you have Rosses in your world, thank them for their analytical mind and, and for always being a voice of reason so that you can depend on. Absolutely. And finally, well, not finally, we've got two more, but Rachel, listen, if you identify with Rachel, maybe you're driven and ambitious, feeling a little bit like perception is key. A goal for personal transformation for you is to remember this. Your accomplishments are not your identity. Wow, say that again. Let me say that again. Your accomplishments are not your identity. Mm. And listen, you cannot outrun vulnerability. Wow. Slow down. Take time to acknowledge how you really feel and who you really are. That's a goal for you. And if you have a Rachel in your world, hey, maybe this week you could thank them for their drive and their great attitude. Hey, celebrate their adaptability and affirm their intrinsic value, not just their accomplishments. That's good. Find their intrinsic value and affirm them for who they are. That's good. And listen, okay, Joey's. The optimistic party thrower and avoider of consistency and pain. Yeah. The optimistic party thrower, but avoider of consistency and pain. Here's some personal transformation for you. Right now is as important as tomorrow. That's good. So be present in this moment, even if it hurts. Right now is as important as tomorrow. Listen to me. Yeah. If you're the Joey's of the world, be present, fully present. Even if the present for you is a little painful, it'll bring personal transformation. And for the Joeys in your world, thank them for their hope-filled perspective that they bring to life. You do a great job in our marriage. You always, no matter what the scenario is, you do a great job of saying, but you know what? The sun will come out tomorrow. (laughs) Bet your bottom. She's so great about that. And I'm so grateful because sometimes I can be so focused on the problems that Megan can remind us that there's hope. So if there's Joey's in your world, tell them thank you for being so filled with hope. And dream with them as often as you possibly can. And listen, affirm consistently. Never stop. She's like, yeah, Yeah. always (laughs) affirm. If they're Joey's, just you're awesome. For what? Doesn't even matter. Yeah, I am pretty awesome. So listen, affirm, affirm, affirm. I'm just telling you, I know these are kind of a a different way to dive into relationships, but our differences differences are delicate. Yeah. But they're not disqualifiers. They're by God's design. That's right. They absolutely are. And I just want to remind you, this week, put this into practice. All of us are navigating relationships yeah. in our lives, and we can work on all of these areas. We can work on celebrating the strengths in others. We can work on identifying and, and working on our own weaknesses. That's the transformation part. And so I just want to challenge you to really be open this That's week great. to what God wants to do in your life and in your relationships. And I, I also want to pause and acknowledge that it's really hard to love one another when you don't understand your own intrinsic value. And so I just want to remind you, we're going to go into a moment of worship, and this song is a reminder that God loves you so much, he is pursuing a relationship with you. And I don't want you to forget that, because when you recognize the love that God has for you, the unconditional love, the love that you don't have to earn, that you just have because he values you, because you are his son or daughter. When you recognize that and you receive that for yourself, it's a whole lot easier to work on loving the other people in our world. So we're going to take a moment right now, and I just want to encourage you in your own homes to take a, a moment and stand up 
and worship with us as we just accept all that God has to say for us Come today. On. So we thank you, Jesus, that you pursue us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you right now for your reckless love, Jesus. Come on, we sing this out. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. Thank you, Father. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Come on, we sing this out. reminded of God's love for me. And I know that might seem challenging for you, thinking, well, you're a pastor, you, you lead a church, and of course God loves you, but you, you don't know the fullness of my story, and you don't realize the pain that I've walked through because of stupid and foolish choices that I've made, and not just making poor choices, but I'm talking even as a follower of Jesus, just over and over again, turning my back on who God is and what God is doing, and Man, God just relentlessly pursued me. And it's overwhelming to me to be reminded in a time like this of the reckless love of God, meaning He doesn't care where I've been or the choices that I've made. He chooses to relentlessly love me. And He chooses to love you too. In fact, that's His heart towards you. And I know that there are some of you who are watching right now and you feel so far from God that it's overwhelming and it even seems impossible. But God's reminding you through this streaming online service that He's chasing after you. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. 
In other words, he desperately wants to be a part of your life. You're a part of his intricate design, and he just desperately wants relationship with you. But there's a starting point. It's saying yes to Jesus. And some of you watching have never begun that journey. Others of you may have begun a journey like that, but you've been running from God, and today's your day to come running back. And here's what I want to do. Let's change that today. What if we make today the day that you begin the journey with Jesus for the first time or the first time in a long time? Let's begin that journey right now. I'm going to pray a prayer, and right where you're seated or right where you're watching, I want to challenge you to pray with me and make it a declaration of faith in the quietness of your heart or a small whisper. Just pray these words with me. Say, Dear God, I know that you're real. I know that you love me. I know I've made mistakes. Will you forgive me? But listen to me. Say these words right now. Say, Jesus, I choose you. Jesus, I give you my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, friend, you just made the best decision you've ever made. It's why I exist as a pastor. It's why we exist as a church. It's why we did this entire service was for that moment just for you. Even if it's only one of you watching, you're the reason we're here. But more importantly, you're the reason that Jesus died on the cross because he loves you that much. So if you prayed that prayer with me, would you do me a favor? Would you let us know? Don't you dare let that be the last step you take in this journey of faith. Life is way too crazy to go through it alone. You may have prayed that prayer with me, but don't let it be the last decision that you make. And right now, do me a favor. If you prayed that prayer and you're on church online, just click the hand raise saying, yeah, I, I prayed that prayer. Or drop a hand emoji in the chat. Or, and listen, our hosts right now are dropping links in all of our platforms. Click the button, follow the prompts, let us know. We're praying for you. Man, life just got good. Not perfect, it just got good. So let us help you in the journey. Can you just do me a favor right where you're sitting? Can we give a hand clap for those that just prayed that prayer for what God is doing? Man, we are fired up and excited about what your future looks like now. The future is bright. The greatest days of your life are still ahead of you. Man, we would love to be a part of the journey. Let us know. And if you're new with us, man, click the link that your host is dropping right now. We love to be a part of God's plan for your life. But here's what I can tell you right now. Do you realize that 80% of people who follow Jesus don't know what their purpose is on, their er on this earth? That's mind-blowing to me to be a follower of Jesus and not know what my purpose is when God clearly depicts a future and a hope that he has for us. But I believe we can help you begin to discover that. Would you do me a favor? Would you join us right after this service in our Next Step class for 15 minutes? And we'll help you start the journey of discovering why God made you, why you're on this earth so we can make a difference in the world that we live in today. Join me right now. Your hosts are dropping a link. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. Well, Movement Church, it's always great to be with you. We love the fact that you tune in and lean in, believing God's going to do something great. We're praying for you. We can't wait to see you next week right back here. We love you. Hey guys, thank you for joining us today. What an incredible Sunday. If you have kids, hang tight because our Movement Kids service is starting in just a few minutes at the ocmovement.tv. Also, don't forget to invite some friends to join us as we continue our friend series right here next week. Have a great Sunday and I'll see you again next week.